it's one thing to learn about color theory and understand the basics of complementary color schemes and primary color schemes and split tertiary color schemes and all this kind of stuff that the names can get overwhelming what i'm a big fan of is keeping things simple and it's actually something that i do a lot in my work now i know that it can be very frustrating though to hear a lot of these terms and then go to apply them in your own work and not really know how that actually functions. It's easy to learn about theory, it's harder to know how to apply it. So what I wanna do in this video is share with you the process of creating three covers for the latest issue of a comic I was creating. And what I'll do is walk you through the process for how I actually went about coming up with and applying and finishing the color schemes for those three covers. As usual for a drawing codex video, this is gonna be a fairly laid back, casual, almost like a drawing lesson video. It's not heavily edited, it's not scripted. And mostly what we're gonna do is just look at a bunch of Photoshop documents in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna walk you through the process step by step of how I actually came up with these color schemes. So hopefully that sounds interesting. Hopefully you'll join me. Let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly in Photoshop, developing your own simple, reliable, line and color process and style. You'll get access to all of the brushes and Photoshop documents and tricks and tips that I use as I create the illustration in this guide. It's free, the link will be in the description, so go check that out if that's something you're interested in. All right, here we are in Photoshop. Now, these are the three covers I wanna share with you. These are all covers from episode six of Act Two of Star Atlas Core. And again, I thought this is a good example because they got very different colors and we are really leaning into the colorful nature of them. Again, these are covers that are meant to have a lot of sort of visual interest, right? So that, you know, if someone is seeing this um, on sort of Twitter slash X or Instagram or something like that, again, it sort of grabs your attention. It's very sort of bold. And also that, as we'll look into, a lot of the ideas that are behind the characters are very much linked to these colors. So Again, interesting little example. What I'll do is just one by one, we'll go through how I kind of came up with the color scheme. And again, this will be a good insight into how I'm often using a lot of the very simple, reliable color schemes and processes that I do talk about when I'm giving advice here on YouTube or that are a major part of my courses like the Line and Color Academy. Again, this is exactly the same stuff that I do day to day. So anyway, let's uh, first look at this one, which is the green one. So just so you can see the process, this is generally the, the steps that I use to create the thing in general. This has nothing to do with the coloring of it, but again, I thought I'd sort of just mention this and sort of share it with you. I'm starting with a very simple kind of rough thumbnail drawing. And this one actually, I think, was done on an iPad uh, in Procreate, just because I've, I've sort of found myself doing that. Um, you know, it's sort of very easy to just kind of take that around. And often I just rough these in and kind of come up with the ideas there. Then what I've done is tightened up that drawing by, you know, going to this sort of more finished um, ink slash finished line stage. Now, it's important to note that, again, at this point, I, I don't really have any idea what the colors are going to be. Um, insofar as I haven't planned, I haven't sort of shown anyone, but I do have a little bit of an idea. So again, let's sort of focus on the color Photoshop document. And again, we'll sort of look at how this happened. So the first thing I do is in my mind, think about how we can come up with a really strong image. Now, this is the first goal of these particular covers and often Something that's monochromatic will actually work pretty well because often a cover is compared to other things. So you are often in a bookstop, bookshop, which again doesn't really exist anymore, but often bookshops these days are in a similar way, like one image is in a sea of other images on an Instagram sort of scrolling page, or again, you're sort of scrolling through some social media thing and there's a whole bunch of stuff. It's the same as a bookshop, a magazine rack from the days of yore. It's the same idea, you have to stand out. 
something that's monochromatic and sort of simple and graphic tends to work pretty well because again it's competing against other things and it tends to hold a lot of visual interest there's many ways to do this but again it's one of the things that does tend to work so i know that this character here um is green and they're very green now the thing here is that it's very hard to hide how green he is. This guy is fluoro fluoro green and his ship is fluoro green. And I kind of did this because I, I kind of wanted to push this idea of this kind of bold color and for myself to get better at using different types of color. So you can see what I am sort of forced to do, and this is where often a big part of the teaching and the things that I'm often talking about is that we often don't have as many choices as we think. So this character is here and I've made them big and I'm kind of imagining like they're going to be this big triangle of green. And I'm like, that's kind of what it's going to be. It's hard to hide the greenness of him. So let's hide it in plain sight. Let's make it a major thing. Now, the story here behind this is that this character, they're both robots and the green guy is called Stati and the sort of broken guy is called Timpo. And basically their interaction in the story is that the green guy is hunting the broken guy and his goal is to basically take him back to the sort of um, home world of these robots and basically put him to death because he has been errant and he's broken and there's this sort of puritanical vibe that um, the sort of green guy has. So it's talking to the fact that in this particular episode, um, the broken tempo character gets captured and he's going to get disintegrated. So I want this kind of giant edifice, this monolithic feeling of strength of the green character. And I want that sort of overlaid by this chaotic sort of rush of these rocks coming up. And again, there's if you sort of zoom in, we can see that it's kind of easy to see. I've sort of drawn a lot of, so again, very, very simple line and color process. A lot of these lines are very basic, but we're trying to get the feeling that, again, this character is kind of just disintegrating into the air. So that's kind of the story and the vibe here. I, I want the green to be monolithic, strong. I've got this triangular composition. It's green. It's green. So I'm like, well, look, most of this cover is going to be green. Let's just lean to that. Do I need to add other colors? No, I don't. It's hard to, because the, the whole point of the cover is the character being green. That's, it's his strength, right? So I'm going to go with a very simple analogous color scheme. We're going to use greens and some kind of blues, right? So what I typically do in the beginning with a line and color process is I kind of flat everything in the colors that I know need to be there. This, these are the same flats that would be on the interior page for all of the characters. And then what I'm going to do is separate things out and we'll start to add a little bit of color to things and simplify the image. But from the beginning, the basic look of how things sort of turn out, this is sort of the finish, right? It, it's all there, right? We, we, we're not really doing that much different. We're just sort of subtly moving the focus around. Um, so yeah, there we go. We've got that. So the first thing I, I tend to do to think through this is to think about adding some very simple tonal and, and color work to separate out these different elements. So in this instance, I've got a couple of things. I'm just going through this file and sort of looking at some different things that, because it's hard to remember exactly what sort of sequence I put things on. But I think we probably would have had, right, something like this, where, again, we're kind of pushing this character up and often this is these are the crop marks so this is actually sort of what we'll see and then on the tempo character what i've got is i'm sort of making all his different colors be more homogenous more analogous to each other and we're sort of making him blue as if this energy is kind of you know taking him up and he's just being disintegrated so he's going to become much more blue right and then I, I think uh, we have a couple of different sort of color grades that go on there. But yeah, what I'm doing is just shifting everything towards being more and more green, essentially. Um, and again, it's hard to know exactly sort of what sequence I, I sort of did these in, because often what I'm doing is putting a little bit more green or a little bit more blue here to kind of like shift it around and get the focus right. But this is basically the sequence in which I would do it. So we kind of keep pushing things, keep, um, you know, sort of adding blue and making sure we got this green, blue, 
um, emphasis. And then I think also I made the this character even more green, right? So it's just like before we sort of had some of these these other colors that were sort of evident here, um, where he's got the sort of robotic um, sort of gray. And yeah, I just kind of made like, nah, nah, it's all green, right? We just got this giant green block. So you can see here, this is like a good example, probably if we sort of take that off, right? This is sort of a good example of how the image is gonna function. If we compare this to the finished one, right? This is kind of basically it. There's some adjustments that are made because obviously this is not sophisticated, but this is how it's kind of playing out. Giant green chunk, and we've got this sort of blue tempo being disintegrated by this kind of light beam. Um, but I think one of the things we sort of, you know, do is sort of grade back some of these rocks in the background. So they kind of go bye bye, they disappear. And then what I sort of played around with was sort of pulling out some sort of light behind the main character. Um, we do a little bit more of that there. Right. And again, I forget exactly which, which layer goes on where. So now we're sort of just tw tweaking and pushing it back, right? So there's a process of like picking the colors and then the, the rest of it is essentially massaging the image. And one of the other things I did is make the character here transparent. And, you know, I, I'm just trying to work with basic color. We've got blues and greens, but it still looks kind of graphic, right? It doesn't have the sophistication we need. And that's where, you know, what I'm going to do is, is add all of this kind of extra stuff to make it feel a little bit more nuanced. And a lot of this happens in the end. So what I'm going to do is, is actually just kind of go back in Photoshop in history so that I know that I'm not going to mess anything up. And what we'll do is just sort of show you what, there we go. So this is kind of probably where we, we sort of were, right? We've got all of these different sort of big chunks of color. We've got the blue and we've got the green and that means we're gonna get some separation, right? I want the main character in the background to be green. I want this character to be blue. And I feel like, like you know, the, the image is kind of working okay here, right? Let's sort of crop it in. That's kind of probably what I'm imagining I'm actually gonna see on the finished image. And then the rest of it is a matter of homogenizing these colors a little bit. Now that I've got them separated, we're just gonna to work towards making it much more of a sort of monotone image with green and blue being the way that this kind of functions. So I'm putting a few extra little bits of different grade on there. And then finally, we just sort of get that texture, right? And that's it. So this is kind of how I tend to, to walk through the, the color process. I'm very sort of simple. And it's important to note that again, a lot of this has to do with the story and the kind of initial image you have. So obviously the initial idea I had was again, this big, as I said, this big edifice of sort of, you know, green, right? And that's a major part of it. And then we got this sort of blue and it's a matter of separating those things out, putting them on the canvas and then sort of massaging it to make sure that we get the hierarchy correct. So we've got all these things on different layers. It's very easy with the line and color process to do this. And yeah, then it's a matter of adding some sophistication, right? Like toning some things back and, you know, really kind of simplifying the image because what I want is just this kind of strong, simple, basic graphic image that tells a story. And all we really need to pay attention to is just the main character's face. That's what's going to pop. And the second thing is this, uh, you know, the tempo character here where, you know, almost you, if you don't see him there, that's okay. We want to sort of turn that back. But anyway, that's the first cover and, you know, the thought process that goes into, you know, how I actually come up with the colors and, and how I kind of step through it. Now, again, it's sort of without doing a full tutorial, it's hard to show you exactly all the struggles that I had. There's times where we go back and forward and mess around with it, right? Um, but again, this is basically how it happens. So let me know in the comments down below, again, whether that's sort of insightful. Um, yeah, and we'll check out another cover and do kind of a very similar thing. Just break down how this tends to go. All right, so here we have another cover. Now, what I'll do with this one is we don't necessarily need to, you know, show all of the process. What I'll talk about here is more of the color theory and how I sort of came up with a particular color scheme here. 
what we'll do is just take off a bit of the final grade, which will kind of give us an insight into how the sort of initial process went. So the, the basic theory here is that this is the crime lord Huracano. These are uh, these little sort of um, sort of furry science fiction characters in the Star Atlas world. And, um, you know, he's like this sort of ultimate um, criminal mastermind, essentially. And he's in this episode, he has done some very sort of tricky stuff. And this is talking about his kind of rise in power, essentially. And part of the motif here is they, they I don't know why, but these guys have this kind of squid deity. And they kind of have a lot of squid iconography around them. And so part of it is like metaphorically thinking about this character getting literally the kind of tentacles into, um, you know, sort of the universe, right? And sort of taking over and this kind of writhing mass of these kind of squid tentacles coming up and behind them again. If you're not into the story of this, some of this probably doesn't make as much sense, but behind them is this planet and the planet is kind of uh, holds a lot of these sort of magical resources that they're after. So it, it's talking to the fact that he is kind of rising up, right? And he's getting his sort of tentacles and his fingers into everything. Um, and he's kind of starting to ascend. So there's this feeling of sort of chaos from a story point of view. Now, what needs to be in this image? Uh, we need the character who is mostly going to be this kind of brighter white color, which is going to pop, which I know is going to be good. We have a, a basically like a nothingy sort of gray color here that I've kind of toned down so that, uh, again, it's not really going to be a major factor. The major thing that we have is often a lot of these squid motifs are gold. They're made of gold. These guys like all of their rich, opulent, luxury lifestyle. That's part of the lore and the story. So his kind of color is gold. It's yellow. It's reds. It's oranges. So we have this. And I'm like, well, okay. The other thing we have is the feeling that a lot of the sort of resources here um, that they're all, they're all sort of chasing are this kind of um, sort of pinky color, right? Um, it's often these asteroids filled with this kind of strange, um, magical kind of resource that everyone's after. And, and we, in the comic, we kind of have that as being pink. So, but again, we don't want to push that so much. And this is where, again, you, you can easily trip up. So we have the colors that need to be there. And, and if you go back and look at, like, if we look at the background, you can see that I have actually made all of these different sort of things in the background. They, they just are flatted in a similar way to the previous cover. But what I've done is I've just toned that down for the most part. And we've added quite a few sort of gradients, right, to really kind of separate things out. So here's like another kind of probably like an earlier permutation of how this sort of might have turned out. Um, yeah, and we're just going through very basic color scheme. It's like, well, look, the character is kind of, you know, doesn't really have a color. We've got this gold, yellowy squid stuff. And then I'm kind of like, okay, well, let's kind of go a little bit sort of blue, purpley in the background, right? That tint, that would tend to kind of work right from our, from our color scheme point of view, right? If we kind of look at our color wheel, right? If I have my sort of key color is sort of red orange, right? Um, you know, sort of orangey red, then, you know, you're going to sort of get your sort of purpley colors are, are going to be sort of somewhere there. It's not an ideal color scheme. So I think what I was sort of interested in doing is making this one more monochromatic as well, a little bit more graphic. And that's where I kind of made this more yellow. And in the end, what you see is only like a faint sort of tinge of some of those kind of pinks there so we kind of did that and then I graded it even more right boom so we kind of like basically make it all kind of yellow and then I did a slight little blur effect right a few other little things and then some sort of texture of the top and that's basically what we ended up with and so what you can see is that there's still like a vestige of some of that subtlety there. And this is where it's important from a line and color process standpoint. Again, these theories will work no matter what's not whatever style you're working in. But from a line and color point of view, this can be very useful is kind of flat everything in and, and get the colors to be kind of, you know, how I need them to be in the beginning. And then when, when we kind of tone them down and make them more analogous and more harmonious and sort of grade and push that down, there's still a touch of that kind of pink back there and it separates everything out and gives it a certain level of sophistication but 
essentially, from a color theory point of view, this one is sort of orangey red because the main character is, you know, his color is sort of this uh, orangey, goldy, sort of opulent color. And we wanted to, I wanted to get this feeling of kind of energy rushing up, directionality, the simple gradients. And, uh, you know, we still have some of this color left over. So it has some sophistication. There's still some pink there. But essentially, I'm just like, look, does this need to be have a lot of crazy color? No, right? We can just make this kind of a real statement color, right? It's like the, the Crime Lord Hurricaner and it's completely gold. And, you know, he's having his, you know, day in the sun. All right. So here's the last cover. And again, this one is, uh, you know, something that ended up being a lot more abstract. But the process is very similar. So hopefully, you know, through doing these, again, let me know in the comments down below if, if you're know, hearing my rambling thought process and, you know, seeing this is kind of, you know, sort of interesting. and helps you understand that the messiness of how often these things are, you know, derived. Um, again, I'm just doing this off the cuff. I'm just kind of sharing you going through the process. So, uh, again, hopefully um, we're sort of going fast enough to make this entertaining. But, uh, you know, this cover, I, I feel like kind of turned out kind of interesting. There, there was actually a no, another cover that I feel like did a, did, a, did a similar thing. So I'll just kind of bring that up um, to kind of show you what, what my sort of idea and my thought process was. So we had another cover that had this kind of real diagonal strike through it that I, that I felt really worked. And uh, again, you know, other sort of simple color scheme there. Um, so, you know, I kind of had this idea to, to have this kind of similar thing. And the, the story here that, again, always, as you notice, a lot of the way I derive the colors is based on story because it allows me to choose something. But what we kind of have, because again, here, it's like, look, what is there? There's nothing. I, I, there's no color here. And this potential, like, there's no color that this needs to be let's say that there's no environment it's a very abstract image you've actually got three separate scenes here you've got the the character the robot character here um who is is kind of you know in almost like a separate abstract space to the main character and then behind him is you know this sort of other rock alien creature and Again, there's this complicated relationship between all these characters that's part of the story. And, and that's what this cover speaks to, essentially, is that the main character is almost being ripped in kind of different directions by the way that these characters interact. Um, because uh, this is kind of his robot girlfriend who sort of passed away very early in the series. And, and this is kind of this weird manifestation of her through this kind of thing again you, you kind of have to read the, the story to understand it but it, it's complicated right and it's speaking to his um you know, sort of emotional state but what i kind of did is just tried to kind of find throughout through the process of creating this again some way to kind of make all of this kind of work and i ended up because the image is abstract and we have tied into those sort of pinks and blues in the actual book itself um I'll see if i can sort of bring one of those pages up so that that kind of makes sense um yeah it's very easy to kind of yeah you know make all of this work so so there's like similar similar aspects to the way that this cover looks that are kind of within the actual book itself so i was trying to kind of um hint at those again we uh, sort of mentioned this before we kind of have this weird um kind of red lab this kind of pink lab here that uh, you know kind of Again, just a simple way to kind of describe what's going on. So I wanted to sort of pick on that same idea. So the process here is exactly the same as normal. I start by flatting out all of these characters in the traditional normal colors that they should have, because this always gives me just something to start on, right? So we kind of start by adding some very let's get, see if we can go here so this is how his kind of flats would be again where we don't see things don't need to draw it and if we look at you know behind here right again got the same thing in in this case i kept that very very simple let's flat the flatten those so you can kind of see so that's kind of what was there um yeah and and basically all i tried to do was kind of create this sort of symphony of fluoro pink and kind of bright sort of sci-fi blue, let's say. And yeah, it kind of came together pretty well. But there's there's a couple of ways that, again, I would have sort of stepped through this. 
but let's kind of re get rid of some of these things so you can kind of see maybe how it would have started because again that might be sort of interesting to see all right so we get rid of all of these and you can kind of see how it looked and it kind of like still looks sort of interesting here but this is kind of where we started right have this thing and this is like a shape behind so th there's quite a few different layers here which again helps me to adjust and play around with the you know colors in the end because we we can get a little bit sophisticated here but basically what i tried to do was say okay we got all these different things here we've got this contrasting color the blue and the red and they represent different aspects of what the character is going for he is in the middle and he's kind of neutral right i don't want his colors to change that much but let's really dial up this red right so i said like let's make the red in the background like really red and, and kind of say like this space behind them is is very different very very saturated and and what i did is i also kind of blended him into it you know again i said i kind of wanted to keep him separate but it kind of made more sense and, and it was a little bit more dy dynamic to kind of push him there and the next thing i kind of really played around with was okay what's happening with this character in the foreground and what i really need to do is to you know sort of make this character really blend into everything else um and you know again almost become part of that kind of blue energy and uh, i don't don't think i kind of went quite that far we kind of went yeah sort of around there and uh yeah you know you can see that right that's kind of just creating some some different separate major kind of chunks of color and then the the next thing that i guess we kind of play around with is in the grading and this is where what i did is made some selections from some of those asteroid layers and i said okay we really need to and this is where often when you're dealing with these very exaggerated abstract color situations you kind of need to go all in right you need to go all in go for it go crazy so i was like okay let's make these rocks even more blue and let's make the sort of energy slash thingy even more blue and let's make um you know i think i've added a little bit of sort of even more sort of gradient there right and we just kind of pushed this whole thing and made the whole thing even even more exaggerated and blue so let's go back and see whether i kind of forgot to turn off some layers yet so that's basically kind of like what we ended up with and um the color scheme is kind of based on what was there we needed to have these two separate worlds that was kind of part of the idea i wanted this to be a very bold character um, bold cover sorry that talks to the, the the drama that's happening with the character and yeah so i just played around with like how to do that and the the massaging of these things again is something that takes time and it probably would need to do a full tutorial that would probably be many many hours long sort of showing you exactly how i start here and there's many times where we kind of back off and go forward and play around etc you know as i'm sure you can imagine it's not a linear process but the thing that I always start with, as I said, is like, what's the story? What needs to be there? Do these things go together? And in many cases, it was like, they don't really go together, right? On, on the color wheel, you know, like, it, it doesn't really work, right? It's kind of pink and, and blue. But again, that, that is a very um, well-trodden color path, right? And you can do it, but you need to really lean in. Um, and so that's what I did. So I kind of made some of the rocks even more blue. I really made um, a lot of the kind of energy that's kind of coming off the character as these pipes and things that were sort of attached to the, the rock character in the background are breaking off and there's all this energy coming everywhere. I'm like, let's make that blue, right? And again, the line and color process is so good at being able to effectively separate out those different colors and really lean into the abstract nature that you can get when you are just dealing with sort of flat color. So we don't have to worry about rendering as much we can kind of go crazy, which is really, really fun. Um, yeah, and so all I kind of did was just try and lean into that and say, okay, it's pink and blue, let's let's go crazy. Let's go um, and make it more and more extreme. So again, there's a couple of simple ideas there that hopefully may help you to think about color. Now, a lot of this will apply to every type of illustration and the thought process, thinking about what colors need to be there obviously the process that you use to get there is going to be specific to the type of style that you're using and uh, you know you may need to think about organizing your layers differently if you're painting this but 
again, I think the thought process here should be useful no matter what style you're you know working in. Certainly, this is the same idea that I use when I am painting covers or you know doing sort of painted work. All right, so hopefully that was interesting. Just a little bit of a walkthrough. Again, let me know if this type of video is kind of interesting and helpful for you to think through the thought process. I think often for YouTube videos, I'm often sort of thinking like, look, you know, this is not necessarily a direct sort of, you know, how things are done, but often I think, you know, this just speaks to how I often actually think about the process here. And often it is messy. And I think it's important to kind of hear the thought processes that go behind this. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, but yeah, let me know if this is kind of helpful, whether you'd like more kind of breakdown things like this sort of sharing specifically the choices that, you know, go into me making color choices or compositional choices with the work that I'm personally creating. Um, yeah, you know, let me know whether that's interesting. Other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.